Hi, this is a small introduction to Moldex 3D 2024, where I run through the preferences and other setups that uh, I think is uh, the best of what I use. So first of all, uh, I go to the preferences. In the preferences, I have a computation the number of tasks uh, you have to adjust if you have a license for eight, adjust it for eight. Um, then in the file, I have an automatic save here. I do that uh, every five minutes and uh, it's only the, the mesh that uh, will be saved uh, every fifth minute. Otherwise, it's uh, a bit like this. I don't uh, do anything, don't any changes to that. And here, I uh, use millimeters and number format. I go for three digits, and then I use the highest number here and the lowest number here to avoid uh, uh, the scientific uh, notation. So I don't get uh, nine in uh, ten in the power of something yeah except if the, it's uh, bigger than this and smaller than this and the mesh <coughs> i use uh, this uh, i adjust this a bit so it's not that facetated uh, on my screen e design i have it like this solid some i normally have this ticked on um I can do that, and then I change it for thirty. If you oh, if you get too uh, fine mesh, uh, go in and pick this one off and try again. And then I adjust this for five. It's not what you use normally, but uh, in some cases I will just want the possibility to go to eleven layers when I have a maybe a gas assisted injection molding or co co-injection molding or something like that. This one I can take on. Then I have a bit of a biasing. So the outer layers in the boundary layer are uh, a bit thinner uh, than the inner. If you have five, the first uh, outer layer will be uh, thin and then the fifth uh, boundary layer inside will be uh, thicker. And otherwise I go for this. Um, I uh, take this one off, normally allow non-matching faces because I like uh, to have matching faces because then I know that the simulation will work, but it's not really a problem anymore. I think uh, Molex uh, 3D is quite capable of uh, doing good non-matching faces if you have a uh, mold inserts or part inserts or something like that. Um, and then I take off uh, this because I don't. I want a real uh, mesh of uh, of the uh, mold base, um, and also uh, this one I take off. That's the maybe a bit old fashioned, but you can try what you like best. Display, I don't uh, really change anything there. Here you can adjust uh, the, some of the sizes of uh, of the things, like a, a tensor or arrow or notes or something, that how big they are. Then we have the snap here. This is this function down here. I use classic mode, otherwise I have to click two times to get in to this one. Why don't just have it open? Customize, result list, I can import here. If I have a result list uh, I want to use, and if I would have a logo inside, I can also do it there. And then there's a new um, list of uh, shortcuts and then information of uh, of the mouse control this is how i do it <clears throat> uh, 
And if I have uh, one here, then I go to the, for now for the mesh, that's the next point. The parameters for mesh that I normally use is, I think it's default now, five layers automatic for the part. You can say uh, hybrid geometry that's solids. They are messed with five boundary layers. Of course, if it's uh, e-design, it's different, but it's easier. And um, then I have the part insert, depending on what it is. Maybe three layers is enough. Um, if it's just a steel insert uh, or something like, or steel, uh, something pure Tetra is okay. And the runner, five bounder layers, cooling channels. You can do that with a five bounder layers, but it's not that important. And the mole insert, yeah, depending on what the pure tetra uh, I normally run with. And here down on the curve meshing, I use for the runner, I use four inner and five outer. It's the lines that are converted directly to solid mesh. And then I have the cooling channel. I just use the default. That's it. And back to here. For the process, there's a small new thing here. Um, I normally and look here. It's bar I have here. <clears throat> if I go to the settings, I have a unit now, then it's possible for me to choose different uh, uh, unit. I use bar, that's what's normally in, on the machines. And then um, I have a small possibility here for some setting. I hope for more, but uh, let's see. Um, the flow rate profile is always one when you start up for the first profile for the first uh, process and you can uh, put that to a uh, packing pressure it refers to machine pressure the other one is end of filling here you're in control of what is the packing pressure and you type it in manually the other one is chosen from the filling pressure so you actually don't know what it will be but then there will be a somehow maybe a good connection between the injection uh, pressure and uh, the packing pressure. Yeah. I don't know why it comes up with three here, but, and now you can see I have bar here, 200 bar. It was really not necessary. Nothing new here. Computation. <clears throat> I use in flow pack enhanced. I use customize. I tick on this uh, compressible flow. I here I put that to volume filled in percentage because then it will always adjust and I will always have nine uh, steps no matter what the uh, I change if I change up and down. Normally, I run with uh, 14 or 19 steps, depending on the packing time. Uh, if I have a really long packing time, maybe I use more. If I have a really short packing time, maybe I lose uh, have less. But it's nice to have a good uh, bounce of uh, results in the packing. I use this estimate required cooling time. Then I have a result of uh, the wall thickness uh, calculated to a cooling time. Um, run fiber analysis it should always be on uh, when you uh, have a fiber film material. Be be careful about this because it sometimes it jumps off. Um, and I use this. Uh, particle tracer from well line, then I can see the underflow in the well line. It's not necessary. Uh, and then I take all these on for the advanced. 
Um, yeah, I use the default solver if I have something like co-injection or, or some other special like core deflection, I use accurate. Extension, no. And then I use a template setting, save current as default, and I do like this. It doesn't save, it only saves here for this flow pack. So I need the cooling also, and I normally run with this one. Um, it doesn't take much more, longer time to have this one on. And then uh, again in here, edit, put that to 19, for example, or 9 or something like that. Uh, the reason for 19 is that then you get it split in 20 because you get a, f a result for free. And the opening tree, and yeah, I have changed here for the solver maximum uh, in the cooling uh, analysis the number of iterations, but it, normally it uh, converts within the 10 that's default. Yes, I save a template like this. And then I go to warp and here I tick on everything. I use the enhanced and then I tick everything on that's possible. In some cases, it's dependent on the material. You can also click this one on. I would uh, always do that also, but uh, it could make a small difference, but it doesn't make huge difference in the warp, maybe a couple of percentage. And I make a template of that, say, okay, and uh, that's it, okay. Bye-bye.